Hello, the topic of my paper will be using folksonomies in an academic library catalog. First, I'd like to quickly explain what a folksonomy is. Really, it's just a fancy way of saying a social tagging system for online resources. So let me first start with an analogy. Here's our course book, and instead of writing in it or highlighting it, I've added these tags. And on the tags, I've written a single word or sometimes several words to indicate the resource that's on that page that I would like to go back to for our quick access. Now that's just for my use, but in a social setting that would mean turning this back in if it's a library book and the library staff not removing the tags but instead shelving the item and then when the next person wants to use the book they get the item instead of being annoyed by the tags they use them, they add to them and so it's a cooperative process that continues over time. Now in my paper I'll first start talking about t primarily two sites that are very popular right now, Flickr and Delicious. Flickr um, allows users to tag different pictures with keywords. So a picture of a deer in California that I took earlier in the summer would say California Point Lobos Deer 2006 Vacation, different things to help me find the item again. Delicious, we're tagging online resources, so web pages primarily. So here's an example of a tagged entry. You have the title, the URL, uh, an abstract, and then different tags. The first two, to read and LIS6726, are personal tags for my benefit, and then the rest uh, could be used by other people, folksonomy, tagging, design. And so that allows me to find the resource again, and I can later go back and find what things I've tagged folksonomy, or I could even find out what things that other people have tagged folks on me. So that can be helpful in resource discovery and keeping the resources that you find. Okay, uh, there's been a lot of talk uh, about criticism of folks on me's, and mostly that's been about sloppy tags. So I'll talk about that some also. Now that's when a user applies tags to items and they either misspell the words or they don't use good words. Um, and I have some examples of my own. One example is small and another is quick. And so those don't really mean anything to me anymore. I don't know what they meant to me at the time, but they certainly don't mean anything to anyone else. So that's one problem. Also, if I spelled folksonomy incorrectly, that's not going to help anyone. Also, there's the issue of homonyms. So you have drive versus drive, so the CD drive versus driving in my car. How do you get around that? Also there's alternate entries, so there's wheelchair and wheelchairs, so that's a pluralism. So you'd really want to combine those all into probably wheelchair. And so these are a lot of the same issues that you come across when you're indexing as well. So that's where that comes in. And so one, another interesting thing that tags allow you to do is to create these. Oh, wait. Sorry. Um, so to get back to sloppy tags, uh, one thing that, one method that they are currently exploring is offering suggestions to users to try and tidy up the tags beforehand instead of trying to depend on users to go back and tidy the tags. So here's an example of when you're going to tag an item. Um, here are the tags that have, I've applied to it, but then they've recommended all these other tags. And I haven't chosen them. The ones I've chosen are highlighted in blue. But they're also saying maybe I want to use social or metadata for this item, which I decided not to, but at least they're giving me those so I can click on them and they automatically add the tag to the item. Now what I was going to show you is another interesting thing you can do is create a tag cloud and this allows you to quickly at a glance see what items you're tagging most often. So for me it's typically the library but you can see there's some different other class sites. Now 
the project I'm working on is creating a tagging system for the University of Florida catalog so users can tag books so that they can create these tag index points throughout the catalog and they can go back and find the items that they had originally found or they can find items that perhaps their professor tagged and thought were important and maybe they can even take a glance and over time what did they find important back then? What did they find important now? How did they apply tags? How did they think about things? So there are a lot of different scholarly reasons why you would really want a system like this. So I just got permission to create a virtual server on my machine. I'm going to start trying to employ tags. And that, there are several examples out there, like the University of Pennsylvania is just bringing up their tagging system in the fall. So that'll be something that I'll be looking at. So I'm going to try and bring this all together <laughs> into one paper, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation.